Welcome to Current Affairs for Beginners. Let's start our today's session with the answers for the questions from our previous day video. Consider the following statements. The nationwide soil health card scheme aims at expanding the cultivable area under irrigation, enabling the banks to assess the quantum of loans to be granted to farmers on the basis of soil quality, checking the overuse of fertilizers in farmlands. So if we see about this soil health card scheme, it is a very beneficial scheme for farmers and there are so many illiterate farmers in India. They don't know which type of crops they should grow to get maximum yield. Basically, they don't know the quality and the type of their soil. They might know by experience what crops can they can grow and what crops will fail. But they don't know what they can do to improve the conditions of the soil. So the soil health card scheme is an initiative by the government for the welfare of farmers. Under this scheme, the farmers will get a soil health card. This card will contain the details about what kind of soil is there in the farmer's land. And also it will list what crops they can grow in their land to get maximum profits and what corrective measures the farmers can take in order to improve their yield. Some of the key features of this soil health card scheme are the government is planning to cover as many as 14 crore farmers under this scheme and this scheme will cover all parts of the country in the form of soil card the farmers will get a report and this report will contain all the details about the soil of their particular farm. And this farm will get the soil card once in every three years. So from this explanation, from these three statements, we can say the answer is only three. The soil health card scheme is aiming to check the overuse of fertilizers in the farmlands so the answer here is b three only the next question is financial action task force is related to which among the following yesterday we have seen that this is an intergovernmental organization which was established at g7 summit in order to combat money laundering and terrorist financing so the answer here is b now let's start a today's session our first article is Japan approves stem cells trial to treat spinal cord injuries. This article comes under GS paper 3 under the topic of science and technology and here the subtopic is developments and their applications and effects in everyday life and it will also come under biotechnology. So from the prelims point of view what we need to study from this article is what are these stem cells and what is the meaning of this IPS cells. First let us see what are these stem cells. Stem cells have the potential to develop into many different cell types in the body during early life and growth. Along with this, in many tissues, these stem cells will serve as a sort of internal repair system. By dividing themselves without any limit to replenish other cells as long as the person or animal is still alive. When a stem cells divide, each new cell has the potential to either remain a stem cell or become another type of cell with a more specialized function such as a muscle cell, a red blood cell or a brain cell. And these stem cells can be distinguished from other cell types by two important characteristics. One is these stem cells are unspecialized cells but they are capable of renewing themselves through cell division. And the other aspect is under some physiological or experimental conditions these stem cells can be induced to become a tissue or organ specific cells with special functions in some organs like a bone marrow these stem cells will get regularly divided to repair and replace the worn out or damaged tissues whereas in other organs such as like pancreas and heart these stem cells will only divide under some special conditions now what are these induced pluripotent stem cells what are these ips cells 
induced pluripotent stem cells these are the adult cells that have been genetically reprogrammed to an embryonic stem cell like state by being forced to express genes and factors important for maintaining the properties of these embryonic stem cells so what are the applications of these induced pluripotent stem cells they can be used for drug development and for controlling the diseases and even the scientists were now hoping to use them in transplantation medicine the next article is rbi to transfer 28000 crore interim surplus to the government this article comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of economy from this article now we are going to see about two things what is this interim dividend by rbi to the government and the other one is what is this economic capital framework of the rbi the article is all about the rbi will transfer 28000 crore as interim dividend to the government till now rbi has already transferred 40000 crore to the government along with that now it is going to give 28000 crore so the total will be 68000 crore from the central bank in the current fiscal year will be received by the government so what is this this interim dividend by the rbi will help the government to meet its revised budget estimates that include an allocation for the first ever income transfer to the farmers in the name of this pradhan mantri kisan samman nidhi yojana and to improve the fiscal position of the country ahead of the general elections in 2019 both the rbi and the central government they were at tussle over this issue of payment of dividends since past 2 years the government has calculated the profit that was retained by the reserve bank of india towards risks and reserves in the financial years of 2017 and 2018 is more than this 27000 crore and the government is wanting this amount to transfer it to it then the government has asked for an interim surplus transfer along with the amount that was retained by the reserve bank of india from the surpluses that it had attained of the past 2 years in order to address this issue related to the transfer of this dividend a committee was set up by the rbi under the former reserve bank of india governor who is known as bimal jalan so now here there is mention of a thing called economic capital framework before going to know about this we should know about a concept known as capital reserves see capital reserves is the fund that rbi will put aside in order to meet any contingencies contingencies in the sense any unexpected events then this fund will be used then based on what factors rbi will put this fund aside is there any framework or any guidelines that this much amount you should keep it in the form of capital reserves it is this economic capital framework which will decide what volume of funds should be kept aside as capital reserves by the rbi and to decide this a committee under bimal jalan was constituted by the reserve bank of india next article is das to meet bank heads on feb 21 to discuss rate cut transmission this article comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of economy what is this rate cut transmission there is also another name to it which is known as monetary transmission what is meant by this monetary transmission few days ago we have seen that rbi has reduced the repo rate it is the rate at which the banks can borrow money from the reserve bank of india the reserve bank of india has reduced this repo rate so that banks can borrow more and there will be more liquidity into the economy as they borrow more they can lend it at lower interest so that people will take this amount and there will be more income supply in the economy 
then what is meant by this monetary transmission this process is known as monetary transmission that means rbi has reduced this repo rate now banks can borrow more at this lower interest rate but whether they are transferring this lower interest rate to the clients or the customers whether it is reaching to the public if it is done then it is known as monetary transmission and there is another concept here known as open market operations what are these open market operations open market operations are the major monetary policy instrument of this reserve bank of india open market operations it simply means that buying and selling of eligible securities that is the government securities by the reserve bank of india by buying these securities in the open market it will increase the supply of credit whereas by selling these securities it will reduce the volume of money with the public because if they are buying it from the people then they have to pay which is inducing more money into the economy people will have more money in their hands whereas by selling it that means they are sucking in the money that is there in the hands of public by selling this which is reducing the volume of money with the public the next article is synthetic fibers contribute to plastic pollution this article comes under gs paper 3 under the concept of science and technology see from this article itself we can see what are these synthetic fibers these synthetic fibers are the petroleum based products petroleum based products unlike natural fibers like wool cotton and silk whereas these natural fibers are recyclable and biodegradable but these synthetic fibers are not and they are petroleum based products here we can see some of the examples of this synthetic fibers like polyester nylon and it is saying that these two synthetic fibers are major contributors of microplastic pollution in the environment so the scientists they were suggesting that better to shift to these biosynthetic fibers instead of using this synthetic fibers like polyester and nylon which are contributing to this microplastic pollution now let's see a today's prelims question with regard to the synthetic fibers consider the following try to answer this question and tomorrow we'll see the answer for this and this is our loikrons website where you can access the notes for this video thank you